We'll see who gets the advantage after they tied at one apiece. And you know what was most impressive? They wasted very few possessions in that game. They ran their offense close to perfection. That's what we call the mute button game. Let's go. You're in. The Magic trailed by 11. Well, one issue facing the Bucks in Milwaukee, the aging Bradley Center, built back in 1988. Both ownership and the league have said the team needs a new arena. Yeah, agreed. They've looked for public financing. Unfortunately, after years of losing and lacking really any star power, the fan support has trailed off. On the court for Orlando, at the 2-3, and three, it's Oladipo and Tobias Harris. Brian Vucevic are the power forward in center, and it's Peyton in at the 1. The beast is checked in for Orlando. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Well, over that break, I listened in on what head coach for the Magic was getting across in the huddle. He told his guys that their offense needed to run through the beast. Coach is looking for something special from him. He's usually not their main option at the offensive end, but it looks like he's going to be today. He also wants his players putting pressure on the defense with early offense. Lots of shots and an aggressive approach in general whenever they've got the ball. They clearly have a lot of work ahead of them today, but time is on their side right now. We'll see how it pans out for them. All right, Doris. And you look at the Bucks over the last uh, couple of decades. They're in the bottom third of the league in wins and in attendance. Somewhat a, of a catch-22 for Milwaukee. Without a new arena, they may lose the team, but the Bucks haven't had the kind of success that galvanizes support. Here's Parker. No good. The Magic trail by 11. Here's the Beast. Bangs home the trifecta. The Beast's got five points so far. Well, I'm not necessarily a big fan of him shooting that shot, but they did give him the space. Henson sets a screen for Mayo to the paint. And Henson gets it to go on the assist by Mayo. And it's six points now for Henson. Now, defensively, they have to pick up the intensity and close out on shooters. Steve, you're right. I mean, they're getting picked apart out there, and the intensity on D's got to pick up as well. I mean, you can't have it on cruise control on defense. Knight kicks to Henson. No luck. And Orlando will come the other way. They defeated Indiana in their last game. How about the box score from that game? The accuracy from the three-point line, just remarkable. Yeah, it was a stream of threes that allowed them to repeatedly deflate that crowd. There's 53 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Knight for three. Orlando grabs the miss. Vucevic is screen on Knight. Oladipo with the ball, and it's Knight picking him up. He dialed that one up from long distance. And that's now 11 points for the Beast. This looks like a pregame shoot-around with all the threes they're allowing. Yeah, I don't know, Clark. I think there might be even more defense in warm-ups. I mean, this is kind of embarrassing. Takes a three. Milwaukee with the rebound. Benson's got four rebounds now tonight. Now, here is Knight. Had a tough time getting anything going against the Pelicans. He was a non vet No one near Mayo as he lets it go. And the Bucks miss again. I thought he'd make that one. I mean, that's his range and the defense nowhere to be seen. And that concludes a high-scoring first quarter with both teams tied up. And we'll be back with you for the start of the second quarter when we return. point a closely contested game as we start the second quarter and for the Bucks guys what jumps out to you stats wise and how about the defense guys they have really controlled the lane with their shot blocking yeah excellent defense there every shot has either been altered or rejected and now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade all fueled up and ready to go here's the second quarter of play setting the floor for the Bucks. Andy DeCumbo out there with Jared Bayless. Then it's Chris Middleton. Then it's Ilya Sova. And it's Dudley in at the three spot. Well, from long range, we've got a set of point guards here that have been extremely hot. 
those are their three-point percentages for the last 10 games. And you look at the Beast, one of the best shooters in the NBA, top five in the league at this moment. Well, if there are no other options available, any of these guys can just step back and shoot the three. A great backup plan for any point guard to have. Yeah, I'd love to see a three-point shooting contest just amongst the point guards so we could watch these guys do work. I mean, I don't know which one of them I choose, but they're all pretty good. Antetokounmpo can't get it to go. Last season was a tough one for the Bucs, but for the man they call the Greek Freak, it was a great situation. Able to play big minutes and kind of took his lumps early, but he's got a chance to be an excellent player. They grab their own miss. Here's Nicholson, and he banks in the lane. Nicholson's got the lead up to four now for the match. Strong rebounding, and he's rewarded with the easy putback. And Bayless kicks to Honda Takuma, and he jams it after taking the nice feet on the run. He is an automatic finisher when he gets into that area. You know, he picks the simple one-handed stuff to get the two points. And those could be an important two points, too, guys, in a close game like this one. Things have kind of gone south for him here in the quarter. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Hey, Kevin. Well, for Giannis Antetokounmpo and his brother Thanasis, a second-round pick, a dramatic change of fortune. Living in Athens, they struggled. Thanasis said, we'd be on the street selling a toy, a watch, something. And it's a good day because we didn't starve that day. Guys, their attitude hasn't changed. They try to save every penny. They know how much every dollar can matter, Doris. Thanks. And the shot is good. 18 points for the Beast. What an excellent performance from the field for him. Here is Bayless. He's guarded by Ridna. Bayless's shot is off. Well, I think he had all the space he needed. He just couldn't find the bottom of the net. Here's the Beast. Right through the D for the layup. And now a six-point Orlando lead. What a job he's doing here. I mean, his second quarter has been even better than his first. And that was pretty good. Peyton needs check in for the And we've reached halftime in this one. Magic up. Well, Brandon, tell us a bit about... All right, men. We've done a good job in the first half of taking the momentum and being assertive... And the third quarter about ready to get underway. What can you say? The Beast, an impressive effort. On the court for Orlando, at the two and three, it's Oladipo and Tobias Harris. Ryan Vucevic are the power forward and center. And it's Peyton in at the point guard. Mayo, that's good. That mid-range jumper, just another one of his weapons. The Beast, he's checked in for the match. Here's the beast. Pulls from the top of the key. Count that one. The beast's got 22 points. Well, he scored over half of their points so far. That's a major contribution. The dish department. It's Mayo on the wing. Guarded by Oladipo. That drops. And it's eight points for O.J. Mayo. Well, he's been a real positive factor for them today, although, you know, as a team, they've had a lot of negatives mixed in there as well. No good from the Beast. Even though he missed it, he couldn't pass up that chance. Yeah, that's an easy jump shot. you got to take that one. No one near Mayo as he lets it go. No good from outside. Got the defender off his feet with the bump fake, but couldn't knock it down. Here's the Beast. From 16 feet away, he cans it. The Beast's got four this quarter. He's created some good opportunities for himself and made the most of them. Third quarter of basketball, about a minute and a half in. Right for three. And that's collected by the Beast. The Beast's got his fourth rebound in this one. That rebound and the foul kind of typify what he's all about. Just gritty, determined play. Larry Sanders with the rebound. Looking at the last game for Milwaukee, it was a loss to the Pelicans. Well, there was a lack of discipline on their part in that game, guys. They committed a lot of silly fouls, and it hurt them. They sure did. I mean, they just didn't seem to figure out how to defend without fouling, Steve. That was just almost hard to comprehend. 
Boy, that was a rugged screen set there, fellas, and the defense didn't even try to go through that one. Now, here is Knight. He's covered closely. Sanders. And he battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. Sanders has got 11 points. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. I agree. They need more energy in the post, maybe some double teaming. They've got to get their defense in gear. And they convert at last on attempt number three. Vucevic has got the lead up to eight now for the Magic. Knight passes to Henson. Yes, and Knight with the assist that time. And that's now 10 points now for Henson. They're forcing the ball inside, and it's working beautifully. Yeah, the defense has been futile here. Five of the last six field goals in the lane. And his shots are dropping right now. This quarter has been very kind to him. Nikola Vucevic has a basketball pedigree. I mean, it's pretty impressive. His father played professionally in Europe for more than two decades, including for the Yugoslavian national team. His mother was a player as well. So you might say his DNA was set up to play the game. He's not the best three-point shooter in from that range, no way. That's a bad shot. Needless to say, and I'm saying it anyway, he doesn't fit that description. Count it, and the Orlando lead has been cut down now to just six in the basket for Knight. Orlando's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight, 5 of 12. And Vucevic, a growing celebrity in his native Montenegro, building on his family's basketball legacy. Yeah.